Catherine Regis, I'm a full professor of law at the University of Montreal. So I would argue that it means good AI for good. Uh, the first part, good AI, it means that we need to respect key ethical and legal principles such as human rights. Uh, for instance, we can think about the right to equality and non-discrimination, and also that we need to respect the rule of law. So in broad uh, terms, it means that no one is above the law, including governments and businesses. And also we have various tools that can help us to identify ethical principles in AI, such as the UNESCO ethical recommendation on AI, to which all member states have agreed, and also we have the OECD AI principles, which are a set of non-binding principles that lay out the values that should underpin AI development, such as transparency, robustness, secure and safe AI. AI for good, the second component. It means that we should also aim at using AI for uh, increasing the common good. For instance, uh, by helping to achieve the uh, sustainable development goals, which include quality education, affordable and clean energy, good health and well-being and peace and justice. So AI can have a significant impact on our democratic institutions and processes. Some positive, I would say, but also some negative that I am concerned about and AI can attack uh, their very foundation of these democratic institutions. The election process is certainly a vivid example here. So AI can influence electoral uh, processes, notably by spreading misinformation and disinformation at an unprecedented speed, which uh, would take many people's days and months before to do uh, in uh, preparing disinformation campaigns or, or um, other content. Uh, now we can create this very rapidly in seconds uh, with AI and this can create confusions in people's minds about what is real, who is real uh, or not. At the very least, uh, we need to invest in uh, more disinformation surveillance and we need to have an absolutely right to know if one is interacting uh, with AI and not create any confusion in people's mind if the person I'm interacting with or, or watching on TV or, or on other social media is real. And we also need to invest in critical thinking uh, at a very early age when we interact with uh, this uh, digital environments. So the thing about AI is that it can do both. It is uh, a technology that can be used to really increase opportunities on many aspects, but it can also create uh, serious uh, threats on, on many others. Regarding the opportunities, um, as a general statement, I would say that where human intelligence is useful, AI can also be useful, right? It really is when you think about all the things we can do with human intelligence, AI can probably help there as well. So that gives you kind of a broad uh, understanding of how it can be used. So uh, we can improve efficiency in uh, business and public services processes, for instance. It can improve healthcare treatments and services, speed up vaccine and other medical drugs discovery, and, and so on. So many things we can do. Challenges at the risk of AI, there's a spectrum of concerns there. So we know that AI can have an impact on human rights, uh, for instance, by including uh, discriminatory algorithms that can have an impact on women, marginalized or vulnerable uh, uh, groups. It can very directly uh, limit their access to certain private and public services, such as mortgage uh, loans, social services, or healthcare resources. So key concerns for sure. There's various tools that can be used to ensure that individual privacy is protected in AI, but it still remains something that we need to work on from a day-to-day -day basis, uh, I would say. But we have tools such as the uh, privacy impact assessments and privacy by design approaches that require that 
all AI developers anticipate and minimize and demonstrate uh, privacy protections at all stages of AI development and including as early as in the conception phase, I would say. And uh, to give you an illustration, the privacy impact assessments in the general data protection regulation in Europe, the GDPR, uh, refers to the obligation to conduct an impact uh, assessment and to document it before starting the attendant data processing. So we really have tools that help the developers to think about this and minimize the risk as much as possible at uh, all phases. That being said, um, while it, it is extremely important to protect uh, privacy in, uh, in AI, there is also a trade-off uh, that we need to be uh, aware of. So sometimes when we, have, uh, we protect privacy, uh, it can also have an impact on accuracy of the algorithm. So we need to find a balance of, we need to make sure we have the best way as possible to protect privacy, but while doing so, we might leave some accuracy of the, the AI system on the side and a, a good balance is perhaps something that we need to think about. AI is, a, is very much an issue and opportunity that goes beyond national borders, right? It, it raises question uh, for all countries and we need to come together to develop appropriate governance uh, framework. Um, the challenges in going into that international or global collaboration is it's it's difficult for different reasons but it is still important. So regarding the, the difficulties that we have in finding common ground it's first of all AI is a moving target so we need to prepare collectively uh, for what we know, but also what we don't know right now. Mm -hmm.